Welcome back to the Player's Aid uh, Blitz. My name's Tim. I'm Grant. And I'm Alexander. And today we're going to take a look at The Colonist, uh, designed by Tim Poles and produced or published by Mayfair Games. The epic strategy game. It is epic. What do you think about it, Grant? Uh, I was very hesitant with this game at first that when you brought it out on the table... Looking at it, and we like deep games. We played uh, Anachrony, what, two, three weeks ago? 1846. 1846. We, we love deep games. But I was a little nervous at first, but I'll tell you what, after playing only one age, or whatever it's called. Right. One, one, one era. One era, I think we figured out the mechanics. I think we figured out some of the strategies, some of the benefit, and a way to, to do actions more efficiently. I really like this game. In fact, you and I are going to play it Monday night. We're going to try to do everything. <laughs> but really good game. I think well well designed. And this guy's a first time designer. Yep, you said first time designer. That's pretty impressive. Uh, frankly, very similar to a lot of other Mayfair games that I have. In fact, they're using some of the same bits. The uh, the different guys there are similar to some of the other games that we have. But lots here. Very deep game. This is going to take you also. I think a couple of plays to to get a feel for what you really should be doing. I don't, I don't know like about it. that. I think yeah. after maybe three or four we, we years, picked it up. We, we picked it up pretty we quick. Did. And we're we like, picked it okay, up. we need to start building farms to get more workers. We right. need more uh, resource things coming through every year. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, I think you're right. Maybe a little less. I'm a little hesitant on it right now, and I'll get to the things that I'm, I'm worried about the most, but... I really like the the puzzlingness of the the mid board and the market and the places that you can go. I like that a lot. Um, I do like having my own area that I can build up and manage and make sure that my workers are doing what they're supposed to. There's a lot of stuff I really do like about it. There's just a couple of things that I'm hesitant about. But Alexander, what did you have to say about it? Uh, I agree with you about the, the puzzliness of it. Normally, with this style of game, where a lot of it is you're trying to do what you're trying to do on your own board, where it's like multiplayer solitaire, normally that's not my favorite type of game. And I think they can get a little bit drab. Right. This one doesn't do that because the puzzliness is so good. That's what I love about a game like Mage Knight, is it's trying to figure out, oh my gosh, I want to do this thing, how do I get to do it? Right. And, and this board is so tight, that, that it, it makes you really, really have to like crunch those numbers, figure out where I want to go, and ah, someone moved there. That's, it's a really good, I, I really like this central board and how that forces you to reconsider what you're doing here. The limitations of your workers, your storage units, and where you're keeping everything, yeah. I think it's excellent. I, I actually think the production quality is very good as well. It's really good. It's, quite t it's typical for this kind of big Euro, big box Euro game. You get nice chunky pieces. The, the table creep is massive. You got a big table. Right. There's tons of stuff. You'll need organizers eventually. And this was just with three players, right? right just three players. If you had uh, players up to four one more, it would it would have taken the entire table. Yeah. Also, the iconography is pretty intuitive, right? Very After good. a while, we didn't even have to look at the rule book when we had a question. We were just like, "Oh, this arrow means this to do this." Yeah. And so it was very fluid. Um, had very few questions about exactly what this building does or what am I supposed to do in this place. Um, I do like the warp me me mechanism of being able to go back to the market wherever you are and anywhere. For an action. For an action. One of your three actions. Right. And so it gives you a chance to maybe reset what you're planning or get to a, a farther spot than what you normally could. Yeah, just you'll never too one one. far away from right. what you want to do at least. Right. Well, I always enjoy games where you, you have to try to figure out how to maximize that movement. This Bora is Bora right. is one of those games that we've played quite a bit and... You know, you, you've got to plan out how to get the most utility out of your limited three moves, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I really, I also really liked the day versus night before you then got to another production phase. Because yeah. it allowed me, in essence, six moves to get to where I wanted to get to. For instance, I built a pub there late because I wanted right. to generate a coin the next round. I really like that. I, I like that style of play and thinking um, if you like planning games, I think this is Absolutely. a big part of that. If you don't, yeah. I think you're going to struggle with this one a little bit, but 
I think it's simple enough in general that I think you're still going to be able to play it, but it is about planning. How do I get this and do this, and then what do I need? I, I like that. Yeah, mecha right? it's mechanics easy, but it's strategy applying is harder, those is, yeah. is the difficult problem, right? I like planning. I'm horrible. At it. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it, but I like planning. Um, so a couple of concerns that I had was the. Um, the length of the game we were talking about. Some people were talking it takes like 10 hours to get through four eras. Right. We got through one era in about an hour. A little over an hour. A little over yeah. an hour. And this is probably the quickest era because there's less to do and the action is right. much simpler. Right. So you can see how it could escalate significantly. Down. Absolutely. And so my concern with that is, am I going to be doing the same thing for four or five hours? Am I just going to be collecting resources, building buildings? I don't know how well that's going to relate over a long period of time. Am I progressing to yeah. the point where it's feeling different in Era 4 than it was in Era 1? So that's one, one of my concerns about the game. My issue, no, it's bit, it's not an issue, we talk about this as a table creep, right? Yeah. I, games like Firefly, things like Mage Knight, they go whole table, and then I got kids coming around. Trying to eat all, eat all my counters. And Ollie, everything Ollie, and everything Ollie, Oliver loves counters. So it's, it, I, try, I like to keep everything in boxes and try, try and keep it contained, but the, you know, some games like this, they just this is only going to get bigger and bigger. They've just got piles of stuff everywhere. You might be able to solve that with a tray, though. Uh, we didn't yeah. talk about that earlier. I do need to get a GMT tray. Yeah. A okay. Feast for Odin, right, has yeah. almost, I think, almost more stuff than this, and it fits in two trays and really... I think organizes it, so I think yeah. that'd be a good step to keep this organized yeah. and those organized. But well, I'm lucky to have a big table. I know there's a lot of people out there who don't, so just be be wary. This is mm. you're gonna need yeah. at least a good amount of space for this game. I don't know that I have any negative things to say. Like I said, we only played once. Right. The concern that I had, the one concern I had, is I kept running into you, and I had to end up paying. What does it require? Well, a fee, either a tool or a food. Which the food wasn't that big of a deal at the early right. going, but and then I had to build a resource. building resource, yeah. and and I'm like, I did that I think three times, and I I kept asking, telling myself get away from Alexander, but it seemed like we were doing the same thing, yeah. and that's where maybe the uh, player order comes right. in. So I would be able to do what I wanted to do, and then he would have to be dealing with that, but. That's just part of the game. you got to plan for it. And I think in the later eras, when you have more, um, I forget what they're called, scholars, or I, I forget what they're called out on the main board, but you'll have, each player will have more of those. So that might even be even more detrimental yeah, more of a later yeah. on in the game. I mean, if you um, had six of those out there, you would be running into people more and more often. Right. But hopefully by that point, you've built your engine, and you're not... As worried about one resource. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's dependent on certain this times. is an engine building game, I think. You're you're trying to develop an engine. What were these called? I uh, really the colonies. Liked. Yeah, the we colonies, colonies really. I really like those two. Those are really neat addition. And these were four out of how many available? Nine. Nine. There's nine total. And looking at these, you and I both developed uh, the industrial colony where we could change our wood into planks during production. Which yeah. once again goes along that same route of trying to make your moves efficient. Right. That way I didn't have to move all the way over to the joiner. I could do that at the beginning of every round and get a plank, yeah. which is required to build these better buildings. Yeah. So I love this part of it, and I'd love to explore that more. Yeah, those are really neat, and they're, they're kind of expensive to build. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, especially early on. Getting but it's a good it investment. Good. But it's a good investment. I did like that. The other concern I had was the planning cards. Um just, just I, I, I struggle with games that the victory points, some cards give you victory points, other cards don't. And so I, that really concerns me, especially with a strategy game like this, when I'm doing as much as I can, optimizing as much as I can on my player board, and then at the end of the game, somebody else gets five victory points and I get nothing. Yeah. Um, so I really struggle with that sometimes. I should have maybe went to the library a little bit more to get more cards to see if I could get some of those cards. But um, that concerns me a little bit. Well, it was interesting. Out of the six cards that I think we all got, was that about how many we got, or did you get yeah. more? Yeah. I, I was the only one that received the two that gave you victory points, so the, the other guys didn't get those. And that I only played one of them, so it did give me two victory points. Right. But, yeah, anytime you draw random cards, that's a problem. What did you think, Alexander? So, overall, I really, really liked this game. Which was a surprise to me, just because it's a, because the style of the game is 
not necessarily my favorite style of game, but mm -hmm. I think it's um, very well designed and also very well executed. Mm -hmm. That makes a big difference because you can design a game, but you know, it can end up kind of clunky, especially with these big, deep, strategic games with lots right. of planning and thinking ahead with many different phases and many different eras with lots of different things coming up. You know, I want to get three years down the line and something's broken, but yeah. it, it seems to be very, very well done. And I think Tim Pulse has done an excellent job designing a heavy Euro game. Yeah, super heavy. Uh, give us your final thoughts, Grant. Uh, I think it's a great game. Uh, obviously, we just played one era uh, for about an hour or so, but lots of, lots of depth of strategy, lots of options, I think, for... You know, replayability is yet to be seen. I, I don't right. know, like we said, right. but... I think there's enough different types of strategies that you could have five or six different, whether I'm a resource building strategy where I'm selling at the markets or am I trying to get the best buildings. I think there's some different strategies here that will keep you entertained as long as you, you know, try to do some different things. You don't want to sit down all, all the time and just do the same, the same direct strategy. But I, I really like it. I like the, the style, the, the level of thinking and requirement for planning. I, I like this game. If you like heavy, deep Euros, you would probably want to at least try this game, if not get it. Just with the replayability, I would say if you have time to play this three times a week and you get bored of replayability, you have a great gaming group. I, I, right. This one, I don't worry about that at all because we're not going to play it. Five times. Right. It, 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 I think getting bored of this game is very difficult. Got gotcha. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, good point. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching.